everyone, welcome back to another video. It is Francesco here. Welcome to the Keep Productive YouTube channel if you're brand new. And if you're a regular, welcome back. So I'm just going to be doing a short video today, more about the sort of New Year's installation of apps and maybe some bad practices hopefully some stuff that you can take note of when you're downloading productivity apps. I feel like it's useful to say to give you guys the best advice to go along with the productivity app. Uh, naturally, the installs of them in January and February 2017 are pretty, or 2018, are pretty much like that. Like they go off the roof because everyone tends to focus new year, new me. I'm gonna, you know, get all those tools in act and get working on things. I think that's great. I think it's a really great time of year because a lot of people get focused, organized, and ready to kick the butts of New Year's resolutions. But what I just want to clarify is a few bad practices that I think would be beneficial for you. Consistency. Consistency in a productivity app is important. I think that when it comes to choosing your productivity app, take some time on it. Spend time focusing on an application that you will work well with or you thoroughly enjoy. I think that saves you time in the long run because you don't want to keep flipping or changing applications every month, mainly because you're going to damage your productivity and you're going to stress yourself out. Having a sort of short term base and almost like just being there for a few days is very scary sometimes and will not set you off on the good fit in the new year. So what I recommend is sticking with an application for three months. I think even if you don't like it, set a base there. Then you can come out of three months and work out exactly what went wrong. In your review, you can write down all the features that you would enjoy. In your next stages, you can plan and improve and research during that period of time. Set a date to make the transition because it's almost like moving, getting all your stuff out of your house and waiting on the streets and then putting all your stuff in there and then coming back out and it it's moving base, it's moving all of your tasks and it can be very damaging to your productivity. So that's my recommendation to pause and wait for three months if you found an application but spend lots of time choosing one because you need to find the perfect one for you. And my second note on bad practice is probably time for time. Uh, I see a lot of people that spend a lot of time inside of to-do this applications or productivity applications in general. I think it's great. I think it's a great way to organize yourself, but spend, let's say, 10% of your time in a day uh, inside productivity applications. I think uh, when I was younger, I read a really good quote. I think it was by Abraham Lincoln who said, I think the Abraham Lincoln quote goes, if I have four hours to chop a tree down, I'll spend the first three sharpening the ax. I've probably butchered that. I'm gonna put the quote here uh, or in the description below with the source. Um, but I think that's important. I think naturally planning and spending time on that is very valuable, but I don't think you need to spend a lot of your time in productivity apps. I think a lot of the work needs to be deep work and doing work, so actually going in detail with it. Now, there's a great book by Cal Newport who called Deep Work that is very beneficial for this if you haven't checked it out. Uh, and also there is uh, a couple of other ones. I think Productivity Project by Chris Bailey is a good book, all about how he took control and used lots of different rules like the Pareto principle 80-20 to, to avoid that sort of process. But I do think it's damaging to spend too much time inside a productivity app. So I look at spending 90-10, so that's 90% 90 of the time doing, 10% of the time planning. For me, I only spend like, for planning wise in Todoist, maybe like 30 minutes maximum a day. And that's 10 minutes in the morning, 10 minutes at lunchtime, 10 minutes in the end of the day, and that's really it. I think that if you minimize that time, you'll get it back uh, because you'll be clearing stuff for you to do this more about less than planning and reorganizing everything. In terms of like my personal experience with consistency, I've used Todoist for like four or so many years now, and that's really like that I've been tempted by a lot of applications, but none of them have really come too close or at the time I haven't been suitable to change to it. So you have to be confident about the resource and look at the long-term solutions of the application. Naturally apps change, naturally apps update, but just making sure you're not instantly tempted by another application 
because that can damage your productivity. Guys, rant over. I hope that these uh, sort of bad habits showcased how you can avoid them in 2018 in terms of news and resolutions, downloading new productivity apps. And I hope that you download a fair amount of productivity apps, whether it's a new device that you got for Christmas or whether you wanna just keep yourself organized. I hope that this was valuable. So guys, if you're new to the channel, make sure to hit subscribe in the description below, make sure to hit that bell notification. But it's great to have you back, uh, great to be back in 2018. So make sure to keep productive, Have a, make sure to have a great week, keep productive, and I'll see you guys very, very soon. Cheers.